Welcome back to the Tigerium Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the KOMP44. Now, I got this at Shozy. You can get yours there, too. I'll have a link down below. We're going to talk about this guy. We're going to compare him to pretty much every other Prime that's out there. And, of course, we're going to compare him to the official MP44. And then I'm going to give you my recommendation at the end. We're going to talk about all this. Coming up. Okay, so here it is in the alt mode, and I have to say that this is not the strongest mode uh, for MP44. I mean, it's just the standard one didn't look that great, in my opinion. The cab looks good, but the back is, is just kibbly as heck. But uh, then again, I guess you could plug the gun in right here, and you could do some stuff to kind of cover up that and then with the trailer on it. But anyway, looking at it from the front, it looks pretty good. I like the chrome. The chrome really does look good. The windows are the right color and everything, and it does pretty much tab together. There are, it feels like there are some tolerance issues, but again, those are just carried with the mold in a way. Like right here, you can get everything to line up. It's it's okay. You can get it to roll. The wheels roll. It's rubber tires, and it's great. The door's still open. You can't really put anything in there. Maybe, yeah, I guess you could fit Spike in there. I guess. It's been a while since I've had uh, one of these in alt mode. You do have these uh, rotating rear view mirrors, side view mirrors. Uh, you do have this on the back here. And uh, feels like I'm tightening this section here up a lot for some reason. But there we go. That tabbed in just right. That should hold in to better a little bit. Okay, and then this door, of course, opens also. And let's get that popped open. Yeah. Do not open it like that, but that's how I opened it. Here he is with the actual MP44 trailer, and it all works. It rolls nice. It looks good. It gets the job done. And so it does work with it. Now, it doesn't work with an MP44 trailer, but let's go ahead and bring in a couple of more cars to kind of see how this would look. Transform and roll out. So looking at this guy in his robot mode, I do want to point something out, and that is that I didn't know we were supposed to get an insignia. I've kind of found out later, and so I don't know if mine just didn't show up with one or if it fell out or what, but here he is in his robot mode, so I just put a sticker on it, and so it kind of looks good and looks like it's supposed to. Now the first thing you're going to notice about this guy is that he has very little paint on him. It is purely plastic, and it doesn't look as bad in person. In fact, I think it looks better than some of the other ones that are just plastic. The, the darker red plastic looks good on him, but at the end of the day, it doesn't look quite as good as MP44. We're going to see that here in just a little bit. Now, looking a little bit closer here, he has all of the intricate panel work that we did have, like all the panel lining and stuff from all of the complex transformation and stuff like that is still in there. It's still present. Uh, it's exactly a one-to-one -one replica. Opening this up here, this opens up real nice and easy. Uh, I just think that uh, they did make a few modifications to this as it went. And there is the chamber. Now the matrix is only uh, silver, there's not the gold on it, so that was kind of strange, but the rest of the chamber still looks pretty good in there. The chrome is very well done. I like the back metalized plating that's on this. That works very well, it looks really good. Let's see if we can get this to close just right. And there it is, closed just right. And I have had some issue with a little bit of paint right here. So I have had some paint chipping right here, which I don't, like, uh, that's that's terrible. It's, it's already ch chipped, but what are you going to do, you know? It's okay. -o. Now, I don't think that this white down here is painted at all, but I think that the yellow is painted. So, uh, got to be careful with that area so you don't chip that up real bad. And then going down a little bit further, we do have some paint right here. We have... All this is blue plastic, and then uh, in the back here, of course, the back metalized chrome. Now, these little white pieces here might be painted a little bit, but I don't, I don't really see, because this white is a little bit different than that white. But at the end of the day, it's not painted figure. It is a good-looking figure, a good-looking representation, and for 100 bucks. 
for some articulation, we're gonna have the head up and down. And of course with the transformation, you can get sort of an extreme down and left and right and all of that. You do have the, we're gonna take the gun off. The arm can go all the way out like that. And then you have the 360 all of the way around and bicep swivel. Now this is a ratchet where we didn't have that ratchet in the official. So that's actually an improvement. Uh, if you want to say it's an improvement, he does still have that really good butterfly going on right there. It does feel really solid as a whole figure. It does feel pretty solid. And then you do have the waist swivel, the ab crunch. Now, in order to get this ab crunch out initially, I had to take a tool to it and just kind of pop it out. So that wasn't really, uh, I don't know, it's in there tight. Right here, this little ridge, uh, if you can see it, let's get that on there. Right here, this little ridge, it's a lot bigger than the one on the uh, the standard MP44. And that one I thought was kind of hard to get out too. This is even bigger and it's even harder. Uh, I'm not going to press it back in again because getting it out was a little bit scary. So I don't want to break it. Okay, so anyway, looking at the legs. Now I do want to point out that when you do this with the leg, the skirt hides in there and you can get your 90, right? But the skirt doesn't automatically come back out like it does on the MP44, the official. Uh, you kind of have to pull it back out like so. So that's a difference. I really don't know why that happened. I mean, if it's an exact replica, how that happened. And then moving it all the way out. You can get all the way out to the 90 on that right there. And of course you can go with this flip flap to the back and you can go all the way to the back. So you have all of it and it does feel tighter. Like this area, the waist area feels a lot tighter than MP44. Now the knees on mine are not any better uh, in fact, I think they're worse than they were on MP44. This is, they said it was going to be an improvement. I don't think it is. But once I get to about here, uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to go anymore. Now, I'm going to tell you that they've said that there's a fix for this. And they say to cut this piece right here. So I'm not going to do that. But is, if you can look real close, it's not. don't cut the whole piece off. You just cut this little overhang ledge right there. Right there you would cut. I'm not going to do it. I don't feel like it's that important. I don't need that much articulation, but I've seen someone do it before and it does actually add to the articulation of this figure. And then moving down a little bit more, uh, we do have the, well, we still have the universal up there and we do have everything with the ankle rocker and just all that good stuff that you can do with all of the foot and that's nice ratchet in there. Now I hear there's die cast. I don't feel the die cast in the legs I heard that there was die cast, but uh, I can't really confirm it. I'm, I'm feeling it. I don't feel the cold touch and all of that. Another issue is right here. This doesn't stay tabbed in very well. Uh, you can mess with it if you want, and maybe you could put some of the wonderful polish on it, and that might get the job done. But uh, aside from that, articulation is great. So looking at the accessories that are included, he does have pretty much the same stuff that came with MP44, but a lot less. He's missing the figures, the little human characters, and the roller, and a hose, and a few other things, and of course the trailer. So you're talking a few hundred dollars less, and you're getting a little bit less. And I really think it's fine. I think this car should have given us this option in the first place. But first thing I want to talk about is this blast effect real quick right here. When the blast effect is in the gun, it looks like that. And I think it looks really great. It has a light to it. It lights up. I love those kinds of things. I had problems with the original. The blast effects kind of fell apart on me on the original. I never glued them back or anything, but these feel really solid. And of course, with the enclosed chamber and everything, they're not falling apart like the original did. So I like that. We also have the energy axe, which looks just like an energy axe. It's, it's great. We have the... Uh, the jetpack, now this jetpack is, it's not painted. It's just plain bare plastic. We're gonna see more and more of that plain bare plastic here coming up. And we have the star scream kind of wing pieces, uh, you know, it's for that gimmick. And the star scream head, we're gonna talk about that here in a second, but let's go ahead and have a look at a comparison of both of these heads. Now here are 
the two extra heads that are included and let's see what they look like compared to the one that's on his head right now. So here are all three of his heads and let's get that adjusted just right. And looking at it, they look fine, they look good, and we can also compare them to the original and the official. But I think the heads look great. I mean, they're pretty much spot on, slightly lighter than the originals, so not that big of a deal. But the big difference between these is the way they are set up. Now they have a plug-in at the bottom, so you just pop it off of the ball peg and then pop it right back on. And as you can see with the Starscream head, uh, same thing there too, but that's actually going to be helpful here in just a second when I show you something. But before, this whole back piece would just slide out and then it would slide back in. I actually think that that was a great way to do it and I was hoping that all of the Mashpiece heads would be similar to that going forward. I do like that they give you a whole new head and not just a, a faceplate or anything. I think that Takara did a great job with that. So as for the Starscream head, it really looks just exactly like the one that came with the MP44. But the biggest difference is the fact that it does have that ball joint on the bottom. If you have the Make Toys Starscream, and this is the official, I've had it on there, I had to just kind of rig something for it. I, I know people made 3D printed parts, but you could pop it on there. It's still gonna be kind of loose, like a wobbly loose, but it looks good. And that's where my KO one's gonna be. I'm gonna have to go put this back in the official's box so I don't lose it. You're going to see that they saved a little bit of money in packaging by st storing this piece in here, which uh, it's okay. I mean, you can save the packaging and uh, you don't really have a, to put a spot for it in your plastic packaging, which is why they put that like that. So there's not really a spot for it in your package, which is fine. It looks good. So here they are side by side and they look almost exactly the same. Uh, the mold is just copied one to one now looking at this you can see that the leg looks a lot cleaner right here and that is not as clean so that is one of the issues with this guy the other thing is i haven't had any paint rub whatsoever on this figure came with paint rub right out of the box on that guy but uh, really it would be hard to tell if you just didn't know which one was which and if you didn't notice i put my sticker on that one and then this one is just the lion tampogram with a outlined in white you probably wouldn't know that this one was the official but this one is painted head to toe every bit of it and the paint's still there this one has very little paint and so that's one big difference but the other big difference is the weight and and the weight difference was an extra year for the ko but okay anyway this guy weighs 9.8 for the official and then the actual KO weighs 11.6. So I'm guessing the extra weight is proof indeed that the KO does have uh, some die cast in it somewhere in there. And, and I haven't 100% identified which panels and everything that's die cast, but it is heavier, it is beefier, and it does feel more solid. Now, when you pick, when you pick him up, you see the legs kind of flop. There is less leg flop going on with the KO. The KO does feel a little bit more solid, but I've, uh, I guess I can say that's my biggest complaint with MP44 is that it just feels kind of loose with the legs, but he doesn't fall over and uh, they both feel pretty sturdy. Now I do want to show that here it is a year later and my leg, my knee still works fine, like exactly how it should. And I know that a lot of people have had problems with their knee, but at the end of the day, I haven't had any problems. Of course, I've been real careful with it, and I actually didn't even know about this whole MP44 knee problem when I did my review. It was days later after I did my review, my transformation, and all of that with this guy that I heard there was a knee problem. So let's get up real close here and do a comparison of the heads. And I think I might have said that uh, these are lighter, the KOs are lighter, the KOs actually look a bit darker than the official, so uh, I guess I misspoke earlier, but this is a darker look to it, and that's a bit of a lighter look, I mean, which one do you like, but they're all about the same, and they both kind of have the same plagued problem of kind of the curled pieces here, uh, but I do want to say these little antenna pieces are a lot looser. They move around a lot easier on this one. These are really, really tight. I don't know if that's a plus or a minus. Trying to capture the light here 
Uh, we do have painted eyes over here, and it's kind of like a transparent hollow eyes, which everyone's guessing that that should have been a light installed in there. So we had light up eyes. That would have been a really cool gimmick. I think they canceled it to save money or, or they just put the clear lights in there, the clear eyes in there just for fun. Who knows? Going down a bit lower, you can see that they both have a really nice chromed grill and chromed out really well. Uh, with the white, it's a lot more shiny and reflective. And then the yellow is a bit more orangish yellow here and bright yellow there, just a tad bit. It's not a huge difference. It's really, really close. And then going down just to still the whiter bright white. And then the blues look a bit different. The blues look different because of the paint versus the plastic, but the uh, gray down here looks about right. Now let's do a quick gun comparison. So this gun here is the official and this gun here is the KO. This one's a lot darker and it does look like it has some kind of a speckle paint to it. This one here is just straight plastic. Uh, trying to show you that you do have paint right here and nothing on there. So it, the gun itself looks a little bit better. Now I did have some issues with getting this to stay in the KO's hand and so uh, I'm going to try this one real quick. And the solution, well, there's not a solution. Neither one of them stay in the KO's hand very well. But if you look right here, the tab is a lot shorter on the official than the KO. So the KO has a longer tab and it still doesn't stay in very well. And you couldn't put the KO one in the official's hand because this tab is too long for the slot that goes into the hand. That's kind of interesting. So with all of this hand articulation, you do have the thumb moving, you have a uh, double jointed finger so you can do the pointing finger pose and you do have the other three that are on here and they do move putting the gun in the hand is going to be a lot like just standard masterpiece put the gun in the hand fold this over and of course it doesn't want to hold very well now it will hold for a good pose or anything but if you move it around too much uh you could it would fall out here is a quick side comparison so you can kind of see the difference from the side and the difference would just be the bling bling of the paint. They look exactly the same. And then from the back, there it is. Now that we're looking at the back, we are gonna quickly get a sound test going here. Uh, so here's the official MP44 and then here is the KO. And you will need to flip this switch to on and you will need to open this screw, unscrew that and put three LR44s in there, which I, I went ahead and went to Amazon and uh, I can link you Amazon LR44s for like six bucks. You can link that down below that you can get LR44s for six bucks. You get like 50 of them. And if you have all these figures, it's nice to have them laying around. Like I, I bought one some a year ago and I haven't gone through them yet. And I put them in pretty much every figure. But let's start with the official Prime and his sound. Now these were official sound bites made just for the figure. Now this is right out of the cartoon. One shall stand, one shall So it kind of sounds good. So the voice clip actually sounds better on this, but I really enjoy hearing the cartoon clips on that one. All right, so here he is compared to the MP10 mold. The MP10 mold where it is the MP10 CH Chrome. It's the MP10 that I've kept. I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, I've kind of slimmed line down my Optimus Primes. So I don't have quite as many Optimus Primes as I did in the past, but uh, he's kind of in a bit of an action pose, I guess you could call it. But uh, just look at the difference in the technology and the engineering from many, many years ago, 2012 to 2019, a seven year difference. 
in engineering. I still think there's a lot of good things about the MP10, and the MP10 still has a really great alt mode. This Chrome one will never see the alt mode because that's just not uh, a wise thing to do with a chromed out figure. But uh, there is that comparison. Let's look at a couple other ones. So here he is next to Magic Square and Transform Element, and of course this is an important comparison because these are all at the same price point. So these are all pushing the $100 price point, right around there. Now I think Magic Square, if he sells out, then he goes for like $150 on the secondary market or something like that. Same with this guy over here. So they bounce around. I think the reissues sometimes go up to uh, $125, $150 when they get low. But it seems like Magic Square and Transform Element keep these on the market for around the $100, $120 mark, depending on where you buy it. Now, is this KO better at $105, which is his now, it was 90 when it first was pre-ordered, but now it's at like 105. Is it better at 100 than these two? Well, let's have a look at it real quick. Let's look at the uh, side view of these guys. And of course it's the same as MP44, so you're not gonna see anything different than my review from MP44, but this is with, none of these have painted plastic. Or it's just plastic, it's not paint. This guy does have a bit of a pop to it, but these two both do have a cleaner side profile. So it's like, what do you want? What is your expectation? Here they are from the back and I will be the first to admit because this comment on my channel happens every time I talk about MP44, both of these are cleaner in the back. Uh, I will be quite honest with that and I will slide this over that these two are cleaner options from the back. And if that is something that concerns you and it bothers you, then you have to take that into account. So getting back to which one of these would be the best, I'll give you my, uh, my option here in just a second. First off, if you like to flip them back and forth, I think Magic Square is the best for flipping back and forth. This transformation is still pretty complex, although it's not quite as complex as this one, so that's one thing. If you want the cleanest, clean look of all of them, you might want to go with the transform element. But for me personally, I feel the same way I did when I had MP44, and when I had MP44, I liked it the most, and it's the one in my display, and if I were to have one Prime, it would be this one here. If I had $100 Prime, I'd get the KO, for me personally, for my collection, but it varies, and it's all based on your taste, and what you like, and uh, which one you prefer. So I'm not telling you to do anything, I'm just telling you what I would do. And in all honesty, I'm still gonna keep the official MP44 in my display as my main one because I still think it looks better because of the paint and a few other little minor things like how this holds in, I still think it's the best, but you're talking 328 versus 100. So this has been my look at the MP44 KO. It is a good, solid, first out of the gate KO, but most KOs first out of the gate aren't the best and there might be a better one that comes along. I don't know. The thing about this is he does look good. Uh, he is exactly one-to-one -one, like the official. He doesn't have any paint. He has, I don't think they fixed the knee problem. He has a couple of extra ratchets. He's got some pluses. He's got some minuses. It just depends on what you want. If this is one you want, like, subscribe. I'll leave a link down below where you can get it from Shozy. How do you make